Okay, in this video we are going over a pretty difficult related rates problem. Um, so let's just get right into it. Uh, we have a water tank uh, that has the shape of an inverted circular cone with a base radius of 2 meters and a height of 4 meters, right? So base radius of 2 meters and a height of 4 meters. If the water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 2 meters cubed per minute, uh, our goal is to find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is 3 meters deep. Okay, so um, let's recall an inverted circular cone. Right, it's just a circular cone that's upside down. Right, you should always start related rates problems by drawing a picture. This helps you kind of understand what's going on. And it's going to make defining your variables a lot easier to do. Right, whenever we do these related rates problems, we need to, one, draw a picture, uh, two, define your variables, uh, and then three, kind of make an equation that uses your variables, right? It connects all your variables together. Um, that equation to uh, take the derivative and find any rate of change that we're interested in. Um, okay, so there's our inverted circular cone, right? So they start by giving us the dimensions of this cone, right? It has a base radius of two meters, right? We can go ahead and write that in because that's not changing. And it has a base height of four meters, right, that right there. Right, there's the height, there's the radius. And we know that there is water being poured in Right, so here's the water being poured in at a rate of two meters cubed per minute. Right, so I'll just write that over here. Two meters cubed per minute. That's a two. I wrote that kind of small. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and we care about finding the rate at which the water level is rising uh, when the water is three meters deep. Right, so those are the dimensions that we're going to care about when we're making our equation, right, because that's uh, the rate of change they're asking us for. So we have water, it's not to scale, um, and we care about the water when it's three meters deep, right? So if you notice, we care about the water level in this inverted circular cone, and you can kind of notice this here, right? As the water level rises, right, we can make a little triangle here. As the water level is rising, right, the, the radius of this, you know, water cone inside here is changing and the height is also changing, right? So we have a radius of the water and a height of the water uh, when it's changing, right? And so the, these variables are, are what are important here uh, when we want to find the rate of change um, uh, uh, of the water level as it's rising. So, um, this is the setup of our problem, right? You might be thinking, okay, well, they gave us some dimensions and they gave us a cubic measurement, right? That tells me volume, okay? So that tells me that, all right, we're probably gonna have to use the volume equation of a, of a circular cone uh, in order to, to finish this problem, right? And so the equation for volume of a cone is V equals one third times pi R squared times age. I don't worry if you can remember that. You know, I, I didn't either. You just got to look it up. Okay. So um, at this point, right, we have our picture drawn. We have our dimensions kind of uh, all drawn out, our variables. And we have our equation. So now we have to think, okay, find the rate at which the water level is rising. Okay, well, the water level um, we labeled as h, right, the height of the water level. And if we want to find the rate at which the water level is changing, that's dh dt, right? dh dt, right? The change of height with respect to time, right? So we need to solve for this guy, right? We want to solve for the rate at which the height of the water level is changing. Well, that's good. We have an h in our equation. So when we take the derivative of this, we can solve for dh dt, right? Um, what makes this problem kind of complicated 
is we also have a radius, right? We have a second variable here, the radius of the water level, right? You can imagine as the water level is rising, so is the radius of the water, right? And within this cone. Um, so that's a problem because what's dr dt, right? We don't really understand how the radius is changing. And if we were to derive this equation implicitly right away, we would have to deal with that. And so here we can be clever. Um, and maybe find an equation that relates just radius and height to each other and solve for height, right? So put, um, I'm sorry, solve for radius. So we can put radius r uh, in terms of height. And then we can plug that back into here and then all we'll have is height. We won't have to deal with the radius dimension. And so here's where we can be clever. Um, in doing this kind of substitution method, we can notice that, okay, I have a triangle here, and I actually have a bigger triangle here, right? That's the cone itself, right? The base of the cone. Right, so we have two triangles that actually have the same angles here and here, right? They share that angle for sure, and that angle's the same too. And whenever all the angles of a triangle are the same, I hope I'm getting this right, is whenever all the angles of a triangle are the same with another triangle, um, then they are similar triangles. And when that happens, uh, we can actually set the ratios of the sides equal to each other, right? So this bigger triangle has a dimension 2 and 4. And the smaller triangle, which it's similar to, has these sides R and H. Right, so I'll, I'll uh, just be a little more clear. Right, we have this bigger triangle and the smaller triangle inside that, that bigger triangle. RH, 2, and then this big height is 4. And whenever that happens, whenever two triangles are similar, right, we have this big triangle and then this little triangle in here. Whenever we have similar triangles, we could set the ratios of the sides equal to each other, and they have the, the and then they're equal to each other. So we can have 2 divided by 4 equals R divided by H. Right? R divided by H, that's the ratio of these sides on the smaller triangle. 2 divided by 4, that's the ratio of the sides of the bigger triangle, and we put the same sides equal to each other. You can do that with similar triangles. And the reason why we're doing this, again, is to find a formula that relates R and H to each other so that we can solve for R and only have in our original equation that we're trying to take the derivative of, this guy over here, we don't have to worry about taking the derivative of two variables separately, uh, using product rule and then implicitly deriving each one of them. Now, if we solve for r here, right, we get r equals one half times h. I hope I can fit that there. Yeah, I think that, there you go. Okay, and we, again, we found that by knowing, hey, this problem's gonna be a lot easier if we get rid of that r, if we put it in terms of h, and also being clever and saying, hey, like these are two similar triangles I remember from geometry that the ratio, uh, uh, the ratio of their sides are the same. And then there we go. So now we plug in 1 half h for r right there. And now we're only dealing with one variable, h. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, erase the top part of this board so that we can go back and actually solve, right? So first we, this is kind of messy at this point, but first we drew a picture. Then we, you know, kind of labeled the dimensions. We defined our variables here that we care about. Um, and then we made an equation that relates all our variables together. And this problem was a little more tricky because we had to figure out what R was in terms of H. And so that takes like the understanding of similar triangles um, and then being able to solve for R in terms of H. Okay, so now I'm gonna plug in one half H for R right there. And then I'm going to take the derivative. All right, so I'm going to erase as much as I can with still keeping like the main portion of it. Okay, let's see. Okay, good enough. Okay, so um, let's, let's go back. We want to solve for dh dt, 
right, the, the difference uh, in height with respect to time, when the water level, right, so I'm gonna rewrite it over, over here again, right, here's our goal, dh dt equals what? When the height of the water level, which we defined by h, equals three meters, right? So that's what we're gonna do. And they gave us, right, they gave us this information. They also gave us this information here, which maybe I should have touched on earlier. Right, this two meters cubed per minute. Um, right, whenever they give us like a cubic measurement, right, two meters cubed per minute, that tells me volume. And so what this number is representing is the rate at which the water is being poured into this, the cone, right? Well, that is a change in volume with respect to time. That's what that's referring to, dv dt. And so um, I'm going to rewrite. Uh, my original equation up here just to give me some more space, right? That's our goal right there. And now I'm going to erase all of this stuff. All right? So before we take the derivative of this guy, I'm going to plug in 1 half h for r. All right, so our new volume equation Uh, h. Alright, it's going to be v equals one third times pi times r squared, which now we know r is one half times h, that whole quantity squared times h, and that reduces right, h squared times h, that's h cubed, and then one half squared, that's one fourth, one fourth times one third, that's one twelfth. I'm going to save some space and do that in one go. Like that. Okay, now we take the derivative and we solve for dh dt. Right, the derivative of v with respect to time, that just turns into dv dt. One twelfth times pi, I'm going to write that as pi over twelve. That is just a constant. You can kind of just ignore that for a second because it's multiplied by a variable. And we take the derivative of h cubed, uh, just power rule. All right, so we get 3h squared, but it's with respect to time. So we have to include a dh dt with implicit differentiation. That's a t. Um, OK. And then here we have 3 divided by 12, right? That's going to be uh, pi over 4. I'm going to include that right here, too, just to save some space. So we have pi over 4 times h squared times dh dt. Make that a little closer. All right. Now... We want to solve for dh dt. All right, so you just move everything else over. You're going to divide by pi over 4 and divide by h squared. And we are going to get dh dt equals dv dt divided by, damn, barely gave myself enough space. Actually, I didn't give myself enough space. We're going to get dv dt divided by pi over 4 times h squared. Okay. Um, well, we know what h is. We care about the height when it's 3. And we know what dv dt is. Um, that was 2 meters cubed per minute, right? That was the rate at which the volume was increasing, the rate at which the water was being poured into the, uh, the, <clears throat> the cone. And so now it's just plugging stuff in. Right, we have dh dt equals dv dt, which we know is 2, divided by pi over 4 times h squared. We know h is 3. What's 3 squared? That's 9. So the rest is just algebra. We have 2 divided by 
9 pi divided by 4. Right, whenever we divide by a fraction, right, there's our fraction. It's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So this thing is going to flip. Right, bad way of explaining it. This fraction on the bottom is going to flip. We're going to get 4 over 9 pi. And then we're going to multiply it by 2. And so that gives us a final answer of 8 pi uh, divided by 9. I'm sorry. 8 divided by 9 pi. Right, and that is our final answer. That is the rate at which the water level is rising, right, the change in height with respect to time of the water level uh, when all these conditions uh, were given in the beginning. Right, so that's 8 over 9 pi.